Thanks for your company here on Richo. A couple of hours ago, I spoke to Matisse Corman, uh, our finance minister in Canberra. Always a good performer, always a battler. And I tell you what, he does, one of those guys who does more media. You know, in a government that won't sell, at least this guy tries. Have a look at this. Matthias Coleman, welcome no to the program. Good to be back. Good. Now, I, uh, I, I don't know where to start because there's just so much. But first off, the progress of all these cuts that you were making that you announced in the budget in the Senate. Now, you've backed off on Medicare co-payments. Why did you take so long? Why, why not do it? You, you have known you, you couldn't get this through the Senate since at least, what, August of last year. You knew you couldn't do it. Why bat on so long? Uh, well, I mean, when it comes uh, to uh, measures implemented out of the budget, we are now in a much stronger uh, position than we would have been uh, if uh, we hadn't done what we've done. And what the inter intergenerational report that the Treasurer is releasing tomorrow will show uh, is how much uh, progress we actually have made compared to the situation we've inherited. Now, in relation to the uh, co-payment uh, proposal, look, you know, it, with the benefit of hindsight, we could have handled that uh, much better. There's no uh, two eyes about it. With the benefit of uh, hindsight, uh, in uh, our first budget, uh, we were too ambitious. We bit off more than we could chew, and we, uh, you know, probably uh, should have uh, come uh, to that conclusion more quickly. I totally accept that. But, but I think the, the, the other thing you do, I mean I, I mean, I think that's been pretty obvious to everybody, but it wasn't simply a matter of biting off more than you could chew. It wasn't terribly fair, was it? Because if you're on 500,000 a year, you lost 10 grand. If you're on 70,000 with three kids in the western suburbs, you lost 10 grand in benefits. I mean, it wasn't fair. It, it certainly didn't look that way to me. Now, what is your, your view of that? Because you're going to have to prepare another budget in, in May. It's not far away. And if you go down the same path as last time, it'll suffer the same fate, won't it? Well, the challenge that we've got is uh, you know, that we uh, want to ensure that Medicare is strong and protected over the medium to long term, that uh, Medicare is uh, affordable and sustainable for taxpayers over the medium to long term. Uh, the, the truth is that uh, spending on uh, Medicare has been uh, growing more rapidly uh, than uh, revenue. Spending on Medicare has been growing more rapidly than the uh, size of the economy for some time is expected to continue uh, to grow uh, rapidly uh, for uh, many, many years to come. And we are uh, dealing with the challenges of an age population which means that there is a growing demand for uh, health care services and what uh, we believe is that uh, it is a good policy principle to ensure that the limited resources from taxpayers uh, are uh, deployed in the health system to stretch as far as possible. I mean what is the policy challenge uh, that, that we face uh, as a government as policy makers? Uh, that is to ensure that all Australians can have timely and affordable access uh, to quality health care in a way that is also affordable uh, for uh, taxpayers and what we felt is that uh, we wanted to protect uh, vulnerable patients, uh, pensioners, concession card holders, children, uh, to ensure that they could continue to benefit from bulk billing arrangements. But we also felt uh, that those of us uh, who can afford to make a small contribution towards the cost of health care, to, towards the cost of GP services when accessing uh, that service, uh, you know, that that would be a, an appropriate way to go. Now, you know, the co-payment is gone. It's, uh, it's uh, you know, it's not going to be uh, reinvigorated. But what we will continue to do is work with the medical profession and other uh, key stakeholders to ensure that we come up with a better way uh, to uh, put Medicare on a strong and sustainable trajectory for the future. Even if, if you wanted a minor reform, what about means testing? I mean, I went to see a specialist yesterday, uh, which would normally cost a lot of money. I actually got bulk billed. Now, you know, I mean, he'll take it if it's happening, but somebody like me should never get bulk bill for a specialist service surely I mean there must be there must be ways in, in that respect you can make the savings uh, well uh, Graham I, I knew you, I mean you're a former health minister so you understand the uh, challenges that the government is facing when it comes to uh, financing the healthcare needs of the Australian population uh, very well and I mean you know, the comment that you've just made in relation uh, to people like you and I uh, not uh, you know being uh, you know bulk built when we access uh, relevant medical services I mean I, I would personally uh, agree with and I mean what we thought we should do and what we remain committed to do is to ensure that Medicare is protected and is strong for the long term so that vulnerable uh, patients so that people who really uh, need that support can continue to benefit uh, of uh, from bulk billing arrangements uh, you know forever uh, but what we also uh, no, and what we also understand is that in order to ensure that we can, uh, in order to ensure that that happens, 
uh, we need to find a better way uh, to uh, control spending growth uh, in this space uh, you know moving forward now the way that we put forward in the last budget you know in, with the benefit of hindsight was not the right way i'm not going to preempt what a better way would be the health minister susan lee is consulting uh, with the medical profession is talking to all of the key stakeholders on the best way forward and uh, as soon as we've uh, got something more to say about how that will be done you know we'll, we'll be making relevant announcements well, no, i don't expect you to announce the budget uh, in the start at the start of march but by the same token uh, there are a number of things that, that i just wonder if they're under consideration i mean for a start the medicare levy now pays only a, a smidgen of the health bill a tiny bit why don't we increase the medicare levy i mean it seems to me to be obvious it's, it's fair because if you increase it everybody's going to be increased incrementally. It, it, it seems to me to be the way to go. Why don't, why don't we even hear talk of that? Well, the practical effect of that would be to take uh, you know, income tax rates, so the top marginal tax rate effectively uh, above 50 per cent. I mean, right now we've got a top marginal tax rate of 45 per cent. We've got the temporary budget repair levy. We've got the Medicare levy. The Medicare levy was increased in order to help fund uh, the NDIS. And I mean, there comes a time where uh, increasing uh, you know, the top marginal tax rates actually becomes a, a serious disincentive uh, to people to work harder. Uh, and to stretch themselves and to make the best possible contribution uh, to economic growth. It's really a matter of balance. I mean, our, our spending growth trajectory uh, in Australia right now uh, is uh, you know, heading to 26.5% uh, as a share of GDP by 23-24. That was in the Commission of Audit report. Uh, and it is uh, growing uh, beyond that, in, in the decades uh, beyond that. Now, I, I watched the uh, interview uh, by Kerry O'Brien with uh, former uh, Treasurer and Prime Minister uh, Keating and one of the key achievements that he put on the table was that he was able to take uh, spending, government spending, federal government spending as a share of GDP down to 24% in order to put Australia in a stronger, more sustainable foundation for the future and that was a, a good achievement to do that in those uh, whole government years. But, but we are now back on a trajectory where we're heading uh, in excess of 30 per cent of government spending as a share of GDP. And if we try to chase that spending growth trajectory with ever more new taxes, we would be hurting the economy. It would cost jobs. Uh, it, uh, it, it, it would seriously put us into a vicious downward cycle that we don't want. We want to protect living standards. We want to strengthen opportunity uh, for people moving forward. We want to strengthen the economy so we can create more jobs so that people have better opportunities. Uh, to get ahead and so we've got to balance all of these things we've got to make sure that the spending that we commit ourselves as a government is sustainable in the economy in a, in a way that doesn't uh, reduce living standards and doesn't reduce opportunity yeah no I understand that because that levy is temporary it's only two years I think isn't it so um, you know you can always announce something that, t that takes effect in a year's time that's always possible but it seems to me you, you, you've got to be looking at a, at a whole range I think of you measures. Should, I think you should put your hand up I think you should put your hand up at the next election proposing a permanent increase in income tax. I, I'm happy to. And remember this, Matthias, I actually support co-payments. So I, I don't follow the Labor line on this. I never have. I've believed in co-payments for 20 years because I think there's got to be a price signal. I think you went way over the top suggesting a $7 one out of the blue, having promised not to touch health. I didn't think that was handled brilliantly, but that having been said, I support them. See, I, I think that, that the growth in, in health costs is going to be so great in the coming decade that it's the biggest single danger to us, bigger danger in my mind than welfare. And that's something that I, you know, we, we have to observe. But you've got to go about it the right way. And ambush, which is basically what you did last time because no one saw it coming, well, is definitely not the way to go. People get very upset. But, that, but that's not the only thing from, from the, last, uh, uh, the, the last budget. Now, let me, let me go to family tax benefit A and B. Where are we up to on those? Uh, well, there's a range of uh, you know, budget measures in social services that are still stuck in the Senate. We were able to pass about $2.7 billion worth of savings in the social services space uh, over the Ford estimates. There's another uh, 11 or 12 billion that is currently uh, blocked in the Senate. Uh, obviously, Scott Morrison uh, is uh, working uh, very hard to uh, you know, come up with the best way forward. Uh, well, everything wait. remains uh, on the table, as uh, he says, until such time uh, as we've got something uh, better that can replace it. And uh, ultimately, from where we sit, we need to continue to make progress. We need to continue to ensure we head in the right direction. We need to ensure that we put uh, our federal government spending on a sustainable foundation for the future. And, and you know, we, we, we are going to be pragmatic in terms of uh, you know, focusing on those areas where we can make progress. Uh, and uh, you know we're, we're quite open to uh, getting uh, understandings across the Senate 
uh, on how that can best be done. Well, looking at that progress, you're sitting in the Senate every day, and like today, and you look over at those cross benches. I mean, how is it going with them? Indeed, if if those Palmer senators don't vote, that must be a help to you. Why don't you rush a few things for you? Because it's, it seems to me there are quite a few of the crossbenchers who will put their hand up for cuts, even if the Palmer mob won't. Well, actually, where I sit, uh, I'm looking right across uh, to the Labor Party, and it's, of course, uh, the Labor Party that caused uh, the, the problem that we're dealing with in the first place. And, I mean, the, the, you see, the, the, thing, the terrible thing about all of this uh, is, I mean, the Labor Party in their last budget uh, initiated a whole series of uh, savings that they uh, never ended up legislating before the election. And what we did, we uh, decided that we would do the right thing and we would do the hard yards and uh, legislate their savings for them. And uh, in comes uh, Bill Shorten and he decides that no, 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 no. These might have been labor savings which we banked in uh, our last budget, which were part of the financials in the lead up to the last election, but we're now going to vote against them. Uh, so, I mean, arguably, Bill Shorten right now, uh, uh, Labor under Bill Shorten is more reckless and irresponsible on budget matters uh, than uh, the Gillard or Rudd Labor governments, and that is saying something. Yeah, so but even, even if we can see I'm that. looking across. But even if we can see that, it still doesn't change the fact you've got to get the cross benches. And I, I just wonder how much work's been done. But look, I, 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 they're telling me I've got to go. So one last quick question. I, I, think, I, think, we should get, I think we should get the Labor Party because, uh, to be frank, I mean, it is actually in their interest too uh, to help us fix uh, the public finances. I mean, you know, one day, hopefully not uh, very soon, but one day uh, in the future, uh, Labor will be back in government. And surely that much rather that we have fixed the finances for them again uh, than uh, to uh, start up uh, with uh, the sort of challenging situation that they uh, left behind for us. Well, if and when they get back, I hope they go back to the Hawke Keating model and, and don't get themselves into strife. But look, one last f final question. In the last budget, had all the savings measures been passed, even with that, the, in terms of expenditure, you still finished up a couple of hundred million extra. You'd never made an overall saving. How serious were you about savings if, you, if you're still making all those spending decisions? Well, actually, that is not quite true. So any new well, that's, spending that's was David more than in the Australian is pretty you know, good. It, it, well, in our, in our first budget, so I mean, again, I mean, much more will be revealed when uh, the uh, intergenerational report is released by the Treasurer tomorrow. But like, so over the first budget, we uh, essentially improved the budget bottom line by about $43 billion over the Ford estimates. But the important point here is that many of the reforms that, that were passed are actually structural reforms which start low and slow and which uh, build over time, in particular some of the measures uh, that we uh, took uh, in the health uh, space and, 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 in the, uh, and in the education space. Now, uh, the, the truth is that what you will see is that in the intergenerational report is that we've actually been able to stabilise uh, the uh, spending uh, as a share of GDP trajectory moving forward as a result of the decisions uh, that we've made. Now, and the, the decisions that have already been implemented uh, have actually delivered quite a bit of progress, much more than people uh, would uh, appreciate based on what you read in the media day to day. We still have got a fair way to go. There's still much more work to be done. We recognize that. We, we haven't reached the point yet that we want to be in. But look at, look at the challenges that we face by trying to do as much as we want to do in last year's budget. I mean, obviously, uh, we didn't yeah, yeah, try yeah. to do too much. Uh, yeah. We've got we've to gotta ensure. Too fast. Australia doesn't, doesn't like to be ambushed. They want you to tell them about it and they want you to do it slowly. Listen, I've got to leave it there. I could go on all night. But I really do appreciate your time in the Parliament sitting. I know how busy you are. But Matthias Gorman, thank you very much. Good to be here. He does well, doesn't he, Gorman? Even if you don't like the, the case he's selling, he manages to sell it pretty well.